So my beautiful, beautiful server, which I built a couple of years ago with the help of Wendell from Level 1 Tech, uh, has not been set up ever since moving into the studio. It's just been, well, this is just part of it. This is the 24 bay storage rack that's got 96 terabytes of storage in it. And it's just been sitting here ever since the day I moved into the studio well over a year ago now. And the uh, the PC, the, the actual server PC that uh, goes along with it is in storage at the moment. The reason why I haven't set this up here is because I simply don't have room for it. I mean, technically I do have room for it, but it would be in this room and as you can see this room is kind of disheveled like like many parts of my studio these days and since I'm still in the process of figuring out how I'm going to clear all this stuff out to make room for the server and I don't know exactly when that's going to be I need a temporary solution because right now what I'm doing and how I'm actually archiving my storage well I'm not really archiving it at all I've just been storing it on the wall PC it's all been local storage which is horrible all of my all of my data all of my sensitive files all of the exports for all the videos that I make they're all just on that PC. If something happens to it, if the drive gets corrupted, it's not being backed up anywhere. I lose everything. So I really just can't wait around until I finally get my act together to set up the server. I need something to help me in the meantime, which is why I've employed the help of the guys at Synology, guys and girls, we're, we're inclusive here, to get me situated with their NAS. This is the DS1621 Plus. It's a six bay NAS. And if you guys don't know what a NAS is, and that's fine, uh, not everyone does. It's basically a low powered computer that acts as your personal cloud. This one in particular can house up to six uh, three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard drives or two and a half inch SSDs. And it also even has two NVMe M.2 slots if you wanna take advantage of NVMe caching, which we will be doing today. I'm actually gonna be populating it with six, eight terabyte Toshiba drives. These are uh, enterprise level drives. They're the N300 model. And that'll give us a total of 48 terabytes in this little guy. And that's not even maxing it out. It can technically house up to six 16 terabyte drives, giving you a total of 96 terabytes if you wanted to go that far. And we also have two two terabyte P5 drives, uh, NVMe drives from Crucial. So we're gonna have a total of four terabytes of NVMe cache, 48 terabytes of actual storage. And today I'm gonna show you exactly how I intend to use this thing for my needs here at the office. So obviously the first rule of order is to get all these drives installed inside of the NAS. Oh, and by the way, it also even has, I thought this was kind of cool. It actually has a PCIe slot. A uh, PCI Express slot if you want to throw in a 10 gigabit ethernet network card and have super fast file transfers between uh, the NAS and your systems and stuff. That's actually a really nice option. Uh, four LAN ports, USB 3.2 ports, and a couple of eSATAs. Uh, good stuff, nice big chunky fans. I, I like the chunky fans to, to keep things cool. But let's go ahead and get those installed, these drives installed, and we'll be right back. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by cdkeyoffers.com, a one-stop shop for reliable game and software keys. Right now they're offering 20% off Windows 10 Pro OEM keys when you enter promo code BW20 at checkout. Getting your key is easy. Once you've added it to your cart, enter promo code BW20, fill out your payment info, and complete the purchase before heading to your purchased orders page to view and copy your new key. Simply paste it into the Windows activation page and voila, your operating system is fully authenticated. To grab your discounted Windows 10 Pro key now, click on the link in the description below. All right, I've set up the NAS. It was a quick and easy setup, and I've spent the last few hours creating shared folders, dumping a bunch of footage, files, documents onto the NAS. Everything's working perfectly. It's, it's actually really nice and seamless, very intuitive. You can see I've got a Google Chrome uh, tab open right now. We're in a, just a standard web browser where we can access all things related to our, our Synology NAS. So we're at the main menu right here. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with Storage Manager just to give you guys a quick look at how I have this configured. Um, the, it supports a bunch of different uh, RAID arrays. You can do RAID 1, RAID 0, I believe there's 5, 6, 10. 
JBOD, all that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different options you can choose from, but I decided to go with a RAID 10 array. If I click on our storage pool right here, it gives us some more information. RAID 10, which is essentially a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. You're striping the drive, so you're getting increased speed, but you also have uh, redundancy. So if any of the drives fails, then you don't incur any data loss. However, it is going to cut our capacity in half. And as you can see down here, we've got about 20, uh, 21 usable uh, terabytes of, of capacity at our disposal. You can see I've already filled up about 300 gigs, or 1% of it. So I've been a busy bee for sure. And and here's a look at all of our different drives, one through six. And then we even have a look at our, our two SSDs our, for cache. So our NVMe drives, um, which are perfectly healthy as well. And I actually set these up. I, I set up the, uh, the NVMe drives in RAID 1. So should one of those fail, we don't incur any data loss there either, which is fantastic. What's this, HDD, SDD. Okay, this is just uh, another look at our various drives. You can double click on them, gives you some more information. Um, let's you know the temperature as well, that's handy. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the main menu. And from here, why don't we check out the control panel? So here you can see our shared folders. These are all the folders that I've already created on the NAS. And these can be accessed directly through Windows File Share or File Explorer as well. Boink, right there. You can see I, I named I named my uh, my NAS Nasty Box because because it's fun and cute. Um, but uh, yeah, you can access your files on the NAS uh, either way through the browser or or File Explorer. From here in the browser, though, uh, you can create new folders. Obviously, you can edit them, delete them. You can set up encryption. So I'd probably want to encrypt the Lyle OnlyFans folder, maybe my mobile photos backup folder, uh, and so forth. So. Uh, nice and flexible there, very intuitive. Uh, if we go ahead and go into, let's go into projects. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. we actually have to go through the, uh, the file, file, file station. File station, and then we go to projects here. You can see I've already dumped a bunch of projects on here. These are older projects that I worked on previously, but let's say, for example, I lost some audio. That, uh, that was saved locally on this PC. I could just access that those audio files directly from the NAS, uh, right click on any of the ones that I lost and immediately download and restore them directly to the PC and voila. So very nice peace of mind there. Next thing I wanna show you guys is, uh, is one of the apps. So there's various apps that you can install um, that increase the functionality and, uh, and give you more features um, for the NAS. So one of those apps is Synology Drive, the Synology Drive client. From here, you can make backups. You can also uh, create sync tasks. Why don't we create a backup uh, profile really quick? Uh, remote folder error. Okay, that was from something else. Uh, just ignore that. There's, there's no backups scheduled. So this is from a previous backup, but I deleted it. So that's why it's saying that. But I'm gonna go ahead and back up. Why don't we back up the, the projects folder? That's a very important folder. Okay, let's try going to backup settings. All right, I think this might be, yep, this is it. Okay, so this is how we create a backup. Uh, so scheduled backup, you can choose which days you want. Custom days, you can do weekdays, weekend, daily. You can choose the time, of course, how many times a day. Uh, you can even do every hour if you wanted to. A lot of granularity here, which is nice to see. I'm gonna go ahead and back up my, where is it? Projects, okay, projects folder, boom. So I'm gonna back that up, apply. Actually, I wanna change the rules for that. I'm gonna do, yeah, let's do every Friday at, uh, let's do it at 11 p.m. when I'm not here, so it doesn't bother me. And we'll do that, uh, yeah, once a day is fine. End time when done, do, 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 do. You can choose to shut it down automatically after running the last backup task of the day. I don't need to do that, but uh, that looks pretty good to me. So why don't we go ahead and apply that? And now from this point forward, any files or projects that I dump into the project folder on my local PC will get backed up every Friday at 11 p.m. onto the NAS. I don't have to think about it, worry about it. Very nice. Uh, let's do a sync task next. A sync task is going to allow us to synchronize folders between the NAS and my PC. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my NAS of course and let's do for this I think the assets folder is a good candidate because my assets are like all of my music tracks uh, for, for background music all my sound effects benchmark templates that sort of thing and I have several different systems that I that I actually edit on from time to time uh, all of which have their own unique assets folder so I might have certain tracks available on one device that I don't have on another. This is gonna take care of that. I can just have a single assets folder on the NAS that all of my editing PCs can access at any time, and it's always gonna be in sync and 
unified. So let's go ahead and do that. Assets, boom. We're gonna do, I'm gonna find the assets folder now on my local device and right there, boom, assets, assets. Okay, so if this all goes well, and I actually have my, my assets folder pulled up here. Um, this is this is my local PC. If I, oh, it's gonna, that's gonna go away once I click it. It's gonna overshadow it. So I'm gonna click done but you'll notice as soon as I click that, boom, Synology Drive folder has been created in my assets folder on my PC. And you can see right here that uh, we have a two-way sync folder all set up for, for my assets now. So why don't we actually give this a whirl? I wanna test this out. So if I jump into the Synology Drive folder, boom, all of my music, sound effects, benchmark slide templates, and we'll go in here. Let's jump into the music folder. And I'm just gonna add a song, a track to my PC and instantly it mirrors and it, and it populates onto the NAS as well. Very nice. And this is a two-way sync, so I can even drop a song or files onto the NAS and it should in theory, there it is. Boom, beautiful. It just works, it just works. This is, this is actually a game changer. I, I can't wait to take advantage of this. Um, so that's how syncing files or syncing folders works. Another very useful app that I installed is the active backup for business. So if you click that, um, there's a bunch of different things you can do here, but one of my favorite features so far is uh, restore images. You can actually restore all of the data that's on your PC onto your PC. So you can back up every single piece of data that's on, on your system onto the NAS and at any time restore it back to your PC should, should you need to. For example, if you get hit with some ransomware on a Tuesday, then you can roll your system essentially back to what it was the day before on Monday, no ransomware, which is super useful, especially because sometimes you can't always find the ransomware or get rid of it. This just makes it really easy. Uh, you can do uh, an individual file or folder or the entire device. Oh, okay, it actually looks like you'd need to use like a media creation tool in order to load your image onto a USB stick, for example, and that way you can load it back onto your PC when you're ready to restore. Now moving on, I already know that there's gonna be some comments on this video, people saying, well, look Kyle, even though you're storing all of your files and backing them up onto a NAS, what happens if something happens to your NAS? Then you're screwed, right? Wrong, you're all wrong. So there, <laughs> which leads us perfectly, perfect segue into the Hyper Backup app, which I'm not gonna to get too far into, but I just wanted to show you guys what it can do. Uh, just a quick um, summary of what it can do. It can basically back up everything that's on your NAS onto a cloud service, any of these popular cloud services, Dropbox, Google Drive, and so forth. Uh, or you can even back it up to a second NAS. If you have another Synology NAS, you can back up one NAS with another NAS using this app, which is super cool as well. Um, I'm not gonna go into it, like I said, but the fact that you can do this and restore anything lost on one of your NASs at any time, whether it be due to theft or natural disaster, is great peace of mind. It's just a really powerful app that essentially allows you to keep multiple copies of your data, both on-site and off-site, should any terrible misfortunes befall you. Actually, there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys, and that is the fact that you can easily and seamlessly upload uh, any images or files from your mobile device directly to the NAS as well. So I downloaded uh, the uh, Synology Drive app onto my, my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus here, and you can see that I can easily access all of those shared folders that I showed you guys earlier, uh, just a moment ago, on my web browser. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and let's just add, add one of my photos from my phone here. These are some of the thumbnail pictures I took for today's video, uh, the video that I posted today. All right, so that's me looking looking super sexy. And then we're gonna go ahead and add that. Boom. Uh, oh, it's already there. It's already there. Mobile photos backup. I was too busy looking at the camera. So now if we go back over here and we open up my mobile photos backup folder, we should find, ha ha, ha 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 ha. That is, that is so much better than what I've been doing, which is emailing thumbnail images to myself and then having to log into my email or just going to my email in general uh, on the computer and downloading it. It's, it's been a huge pain in the ass. I've been doing it that way for months, if not years. I'm gonna start doing it this way because it is so much faster and easier. So thanks, Analogy. Ding! Thanks again to cdkeyoffers.com for sponsoring this video. Right now, the site has keys for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition for over 50% off its normal price at just $15. Just one of the many everyday deals that you'll find on cdkeyoffers.com. To start browsing a massive library of affordable and reliable software keys, click on the link in the description below. Last thing I'll point out as I step up this ladder very haphazardly is that uh, if you listen, 
you can you can hear you can hear the NAS making some hard drive noise. I guess that would be the benefit of, of going full SSD, no moving parts. So something to keep in mind, especially because it's it's not even doing like a, a backup or anything right now. Um, so this is just this is just I guess how it sounds. Also, it probably doesn't help that it's on that it's on this thing. I should probably put like a mouse pad underneath it. I wonder if that would help. Probably not. Probably not because the, I think the noise is coming from inside of the device uh, rather than any kind of vibration that it's making with with the actual surface that it's on. Uh, but that being said, uh, yeah, if you wanna if you if you are gonna use that and, and you don't want to hear that noise, make sure that you put that somewhere where it's not going to bother you, uh, maybe in a closet or, but you also want decent airflow. I don't know, you, you, you'll figure it out, you're smart people. Overall though, I'm really liking the experience with this NAS so far. I am I would consider myself a networking and, and NAS noob and this was just super easy and, and simple to set up. It's really intuitive to use. Everything just kind of makes sense. I didn't have to fiddle around with too much, kind of a no brainer. If you guys are interested, I'll put links in the description for you to check it out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it before you go and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. Till next time, guys, I will see y'all in the next video. Pew.